operation point that has a lot of sustainability in it and are wearing. You can dress them up, or you can dress them down. Hello, everybody. My name is Anna Spak. I'm president of Nonprofit Association Generation Female. And uh, welcome, welcome everybody to this month's uh, Generation Change. The second now series of monthly first side chat with the leaders, make changers, and checking out the world. We like to keep the conversation intimate and interactive. So please don't forget that you can join in the conversation and ask questions. If you are joining the live stream on our website, so please post in the comment section right below. Or if you're watching via YouTube, you can also post your questions there. We want to make sure that every session of Generation Change is relevant and useful to our audience. So rest assured that we will always set aside time and at the end of our conversation to answer your question. Today, we are very honored to be hosting Isabel May, Managing Director and Chief Custom Experience Office, Maya Teresa. Hello, Isabel, and welcome to Generation Change. Very nice. Thanks, Anna, for the nice introduction and welcome everyone who is watching. <laughs> Thank you. So actually, my Teresa really needs no introduction. It's a global heavyweight in the e-commerce space, specializing in luxury fashion appeal. My Teresa traces its roots back more than 30 years uh, to a luxury store in Munich, and the online store was launched in 2006. So I will give you a little secret who doesn't know. Uh, so in uh, uh, 2020 fiscal year, net revenue is uh, 450 million euro. It's really well done, uh, team Mike Perez. I'm very proud of it. And again, a welcome, Isabel, to Generation Change. So, Isabel, perhaps uh, maybe we can start by telling us your story, Mike Perez, how you did uh, uh, your career or your current role, and what does your day to day work look like? Yes, so, so I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm 47 years old. I'm more than 20 years in the luxury industry, and uh, I've been with different brands uh, in my life. Um, and in 2015, I joined my Teresa, so a couple of more than five years ago. Um, my current boss, Michael Klieger, hired me. Um, and I, it came to that because I was at that time at, at Swarovski um, and I said, so what is the next big development uh, in the luxury industry? Where do I want to be part of it? And then I joined my Teresa, uh, which also gave me the opportunity to be back with my family, to be honest, because I was living in Austria for Swarovski. So, um, so I joined in September 2015 and I joined as a head of communications or communications director. And uh, then soon the company realized there's more in Isabel. Um, so I'm very, very happy to be today um, in the function I have. And just because no one really know what is customer experience, maybe uh, in the old world, we would say marketing and communications, plus a personal shopping team who takes care for all our top clients. So everything that you see 
read uh, on social, in press, and across all media that's done by my fabulous teams. And uh, we are also taking care for the best clients. Thank you. As, um, as you mentioned, actually, it's already December and uh, it has been absolutely unusual and expecting year for all of us. So how this year been for you, Zambel? Well, I mean, um, for me personally, a very special year. I have never been so much home since over 20 years. Um, it was really for us also as a family, um, also a great way because we, we could see each other much more. Um, and, uh, and, and it was really nice from that side. Of course, it's a tough year and I really feel also for my teams because we have many very young people who come to my Teresa to work from international places. They cannot go home, they cannot see their families. So we are trying to make it as best as we can from a company perspective. Um, but I think it was a very special year. You keep on thinking what's next. From a customer perspective, we see that our customers, I mean, we are in the e-commerce space. We are very humble about our results. You mentioned them. Um, we were open during the pandemic, also our warehouse, our customers are shopping, they are shopping differently because occasions are missing, as for all of us, but they still want to dream and they still want to be inspired. That, that's true, absolutely. And do you think, we, because you mentioned about co consumer behavior, do you think some of the changes in consumer behavior patterns are permanent shift and will outlast the pandemic? Well, that's, that, that's, that, that, that's a very good question, but it's also a very difficult question and to, to answer that. I don't know. I think we need to go with the flow. The one thing we see is that fashion plays a role in the life of our customers and luxury fashion plays a role. And this didn't stop even do, during the pandemic. And we are still in the second lockdown in many of our countries. So let's see how how this will evolve. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So while we are talking about trends, the fashion and luxury industry itself is constantly evolving. And I think so, particularly so in the last few years with the disruption caused by technology, social media, and of course the pandemic. So what does my Teresa do to keep your customers happy? What maybe you have a uh, secret uh, tips or secret ways to keep well, happy. Well, I think the, the secret is really that, that we care in a very personal way. Mm -hmm. we, we care in a very personal way. We are, especially from a personal shopping perspective, uh, we, the task is to build one-on-one -on -one relationships. Um, we are, really want to offer the best product. Our buying team is curating the best product. This is a key differentiator to other platforms. And I think the secret is, is to evolve with your clients and also to look into the needs of your clients. Our clients, and I, I can only speak about the female clients so far because menswear has just been launched in January 2020, but our client is, is a, who buys the women's wear she is a very busy woman. She has a very busy and active lifestyle. She's a professional woman. She has kids. She's around 30 to 50 years old. Um, and she has no time. Time is the biggest luxury for this client. And our mantra is make it easy. Make it easy for the client. I always tell the story that our clients order their pieces on the red traffic light while being in the car. Um, and that, that is really the briefing to, to all of us to make it easy and, and to, to make it fast. Uh, this is key for our clients and this is uh, where we are maybe good at, hopefully good at, and we really look into every case when we are not good. So we are measuring the client satisfaction on a weekly basis and we are really looking into each and every comment for our clients um, to get better and get better and get better. Yeah, in this case, maybe um, we can touch the subject of differences. So how does my Teresa differentiate yourself from other luxury commerce retailers? Like for example, Fartek or um, the biggest net portier Yeah, I mean, as I said, it's, it's the curation um, angle. We are the highly curated. That means when you look for a 
dress for an occasion that hopefully will come again, um, you find the right dress, um, you find the best dresses in our opinion. So we have an opinion. We are, that's a big difference to, to end. We are, we are focusing on the lux big luxury brands. Um, this is really our focus. We have much less brands than our competitors and this is on purpose. So it's really curation and focus on the luxury brands. And being said, you given your experience in the luxury industry, what would you say as a key elements as, as that enable companies to stand out to stand out and appeal to luxury customers? Well, again, if you need to put the luxury the, the, the customer first. I mean, one of our values is we love our customer, and this is the key and the experience is also key you need to understand the customer you need also to understand the customer maybe that are different from country to country or not different from country to country so i think it's it's really putting the customer first in everything we do uh, and we really do it in every everything that sounds very normal um but this is not very normal given how much we are thinking from the customer backwards yeah, so in this case, for customers who are not familiar actually with uh, multi brands platforms, why purchase through MyTreza versus purchasing directly from brands like uh, Valentino or Gucci? It can be much more interesting. Well, I, I think it's not an either or. Um, it's really about, um, it's about, I mean, we have multiple brands, and, and if you're looking for an outfit, you rarely shop a complete outfit from one brand. So I think it's it's really about um, it, it's about what you as a client like, and I as I said, I think it's not an either or, um, and and you as a customer can choose both. It's not right or wrong. Um, so, but if you uh, if you're shopping with a monobrand.com, uh, you you have the mono brand, and you don't have the selection. So we have also selection of brands, but we also have we are offering. Uh, pieces from for women's wear, men's wear, and kids. So this is also something where we can shop all in one. And there, in this case, as a custom experience officer, what is the ideal custom experiences that you are looking to create, or maybe you already created? And what are the, some of the key performance indicator that you are look at? Well, I mean, the key performance indicator is really the customer satisfaction that we are measuring. So, so we have hard numbers on that on the one hand side. On the other hand side, we get we get volumes of positive and negative comments um, about what we do right or wrong. Um, I think this is, and, and we as a company, we look at every of these comments and uh, we take them serious. So this is really something for me, the biggest compliment is when the client is really fast on the homepage. It's not about being long on the homepage, finding your piece right really fast, getting your piece really and your parcel really fast at home. And we get a lot of these comp compliments. Um, and this is the biggest compliment that the customer is really happy with how it is from the selection to the deliver to the delivery of the parcel and maybe the returns process. Yeah, and you, you just mentioned the top client for my Teresa. What does it mean, top client for my Teresa? Well, I mean, this is a, is a definition I cannot I cannot say, but it's really something. Of course, you need to shop a little more than others. <laughs> and, and more often, more top. often than others. <laughs> more often than others, yes, um, and spend a bit more um, and. Uh, you get some certain privileges and one of the biggest privileges is that you have your dedicated personal shopper uh which is in my opinion one of is really great because you have uh, your person which might be alisa and alisa takes care for you and she takes care for you as you want to be taken care so if you need to be taken care as a concierge just where is my order that's totally fine. If you need advice, also totally fine. If you need to have a dress brought because it didn't get, get delivered for a certain occasion, also totally fine. So this is very, very intimate, very personal and very individual, to be honest, this service. And we really cater to the single client here. This fantastic. So actually you're providing the special individual service for clients as well. It's not only click and buy. You have also yes. 
<laughs> Absolutely. No, no it, is, it, it is a special service. And, and I mean, there's a reason why people why people shop digital, of course, but to build a relation to our clients is a key um, is key for us to get to know them. And and they they even become they they become very close, you know, because they get to know the family, they get to know the lifestyle. They are your partner for your fashion needs. So um, it's very special. Yeah, it's true actually because I um, study your website and uh, my traffic light uh, was quite a long red <laughs> because it's so interesting, so attractive. You have a lot of pop-up messages which is coming out, and uh, you just you just want to click and buy. It's something you are offering so many interesting ideas and uh, so Christmas proposal. Yes, I, without any any advertising, I really like your website. So it's uh, um, well based on it. Uh, saying it, e-commerce has been growing immensely in the last few years, and in the market of multi-level e-commerce platform, getting from your point of view, is it too saturated, or is there still room for further growth in this space? In this space. Well, I I, I cannot speak for the future. Um, but I think it's, it's, I mean, luxury fashion came late to the digital development. So that's why it's developing like it, it, it developed in the last years. And there are a couple of studies who say that it will develop even more. Um, so I think if you look into the Bain study, you will see that, that the, 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 that the part of the online luxury is, 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 uh, should develop according to Bain. Um, and, and of course, the, the pandemic could be or, or we, yeah, it's, it's an acceleration for online because simply the shops are closed. Yeah. So as our series called Generation Change, I really want to move from the business to something personal and something different, if you don't mind. So let's of talk course. about gender diversity and the inclusion. So you are the top female leader in my Teresa, and what has your experience been like as a sole woman leader is in uh, maybe male senior leadership team? It's maybe- oh, Sorry, I'm changing position because the sun is coming out. Sorry for that. Right. So that's, you see, it's, everything is just beautiful. We are talking about women leadership, summer sun is coming. <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat it, Anna? <laughs> sure. So, as a, as a, you are as a top human leader in my Teresa, what that has you experienced being uh, as a sole woman leader is, uh, in male senior leadership team? And maybe have you faced any particular challenges as a woman leader? Where is it at my Teresa or early in your career? And how did you overcome them? Well, but, but, I mean, I think. There, there's no there's no particular challenge uh, being the only woman on the on the uh, management of my Teresa. I have very respectful colleagues, and we all respect each other for our knowledge, for our expertise, and for who we are. To be honest, um, we're not discussing in a in a gender way. Um, that's very interesting. But of course, throughout my career, I met a lot of male leaders who I reported into, and I was often reporting into also female, great female leaders. So it's, it, it, and it's different how women perceive things and manage things and men perceive things and manage things. But this is also diversity, you know, this, this also brings more to the table. And I think once, and I, and I, I would guess that also my colleagues agree to that, you know, we are all different personalities and yes, I'm, I'm a woman. And I think what, what I, what I feel and what I perceive is that's totally fine. And it's, it, it's also brings something else to the table, um, which is then, as I said, again, diversity. So I think it is, it is a privilege to be in that position, but of course it's still, tough for women to get into these positions for, for many, many reasons. And, and I, I, I thought I'd do this call with you, Anna, because I can only encourage all the young women, also the older women to, to, if you want, if you choose to have a career, do it. As, as um, the CEO of uh, Facebook would say, sit on the table and talk and really um, 
make your opinion. Um, you have all ingredients. There's, we are all educated. Um, and, and, and really there's, there's a chance for many women and I would wish that more women also encourage themselves to do it. And I'm not saying that it's not tough. It is tough if you choose this way. And this is also your choice. So I think it's really, um, it's really, for me, I'm not even thinking about being the only woman in this management team. You know, I'm there because I'm not because I'm a woman, I'm there because I have an expertise that I bring to the table. Yeah, and there you mentioned about your team um, and my Teresa. So, do you have maybe what is a kind of philosophy uh, in the company when it comes to diversity and inclusion, or maybe written or not written? What is the main idea of it? I mean, for us, it's really. I mean, we are a performance-oriented company, and and I think within my team, I see many very talented people who who have all the ingredients to do a career. And I hope uh, they also perceive it that way that they can do a career. Um, and uh, we wanna be diverse. I mean, we have a very high percentage of women uh, across the company and we have a, also a very high percentage of women in leadership positions. If I look in, in my direct report team and also the direct reports of my, um, of my creative director, uh, we have, two men, like the global creative director and one team lead uh, taking care for, um, for personal shopping in the US. And the rest are great, tough, um, talented women who are leading great teams. Um, so we have a lot of talented people and I'm always telling and I hope I bring it across to all of these people and I mean men and women in the same way. If you wanna make a career and if this, this is what you want, you need to tell it. You don't make a career because someone will just spot you. This is also happening, but rarely, I would say. You need a mentor. You need someone who believes in you. And um, I can only give as an advice, if you look at a job, always look at the boss. There's always a lot of glamour around brands or around companies, but in the end, is your boss and your colleagues who will make you feel well in a company, who will inspire you, who will educate you, and who will help you to make a career. Yeah, well, sorry, it's fantastic. I think it's really fantastic tip. And uh, our uh, guest who is watching, I think they just need to write this notes and just follow because it makes sense and it's uh, golden words what you are saying. And being said, as a leader, what do you think is important or, as you say, ingredients back to we have a, we cooked all our ingredients about talented and career but maybe you can have a, also secret sauce to create a workplace culture where every employee thrives well i think a workplace culture is all about openness and if if i hire people um i always tell people i love to be challenged because I have an opinion on many things um, and my team will smile when they hear that, of course, you know, but I don't know everything. So I need people that are equally strong and equally have an expertise to get one step further. And, and this is truly important that, that, that people are challenging other people or giving the opinion to get one step further, especially in a is a, in a strongly growing environment, but actually in all environments, this is one thing. Then there's another thing maybe that is, that is something and that is always underestimated in my opinion. It is about working hard. I think many, all of my team members, they all work hard. They know where their target is. They, they, they work hard and they're committed and they're passionate. And I mean, as you can see also already from my voice and how I am, um, passion is, is a key ingredient um, to be successful, but also to create a good atmosphere. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's, uh, that's true. Totally, me personally, totally agree with you. Um, you are mother, and as you just mentioned to us, and also a top women leader. Maybe you can give uh, another advice 
do you have uh, for other women looking to do it all, as you say? So, and I think that's the to mix all, all <laughs> women happiness. Well, I think that's the biggest challenge for many of us, if I can say this picture of a perfect woman, whatever that is, you know? And I think there's, there's, there's first one thing, it's all about what is my choice? What is my choice? How do I want to be as a person? Do I even want to have a career? Do I want to work? Do I have the privilege not to work? Um, so I think it's, 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 it's not, we are always also very critical with each other, is at least I can speak for Europe or for Germany maybe. Um, and I think this is this is we're judging as women, and and I think this is this is really tough. So that's why I can only advise everyone should make their choice um, or your choice. And one key ingredient when I speak as a mother also, and and as a wife um, of a of a great husband, the choice of your partner will influence your weight. And this will influence your family life, this will influence your motherhood, this will influence your, your career, and whatever you choose that is perfect for you, or this is your way. And I think also you can change your choices. You know, you can say, I'm concentrating on my children because it's, it's the thing that I want to do. And then I can only encourage when children are a bit bigger if you want you can also change it again you know i think we are also sometimes we're a bit stuck on what we choose and and what is right or wrong or things like that so i think key is key is the partner um and uh, this is key because you and your partner in the end decide your way of life and then of course there are great friends around it your family but i can only speak for myself and this is very personal i haven't i haven't an amazing partner. He's a dentist. Um, and I just recently told a colleague of mine, because she said, oh, I'm sure you do all the household as well. I said, no, I don't. Uh, I do the grocery shopping and I do the cooking on the weekends and I take care that the house looks great. But to be honest, I don't do the rest because he has more time. And he, she was totally astonished by that. But we are, we're very equal in how we are you know, and, and what we do for, for our household and also with our child, you know, I'm doing one thing with, with Frederick and my husband does the other things with Frederick. So it's very equally organized. Otherwise I could have not done what I'm doing. Yeah, so in this case, as uh, it was advice for, for Ivan, maybe you also have advice for female leaders, for male, sorry, for male leaders, who is really wanting to be better supporters for their female colleagues? Well, I think it's all about, I mean, the great thing today is, is, is the digital work world helps us, you know? Um, so I think we're very open on, on working models um, and, um, and, and not being stuck uh, in, oh, it needs to be from that time to that time. I have, I have a colleague in my team. She's currently working, currently working eighty percent, and I see all the emails coming in in the evening. She's not working eighty percent. She's working hundred percent on fact. You know, I mean, it's it's really something we we need to stop um, judging on working hours or or whether someone is. It's really, I only I can only tell my my male colleagues. Um, I only made very very positive. Um, I only have very positive experience with with mothers coming back into work, I must say. Yeah, so basically you had an impressive career of more than 20 years in uh, very amazing brands. And uh, was this always your ambition? Or if not, how did you end up on your current career path? I, it, it is a bit cheesy, Anna. Yes, it was my ambition. <laughs> Sorry, it's also another sorry, I cannot, thank you advice for, for those who are watching us. <laughs> I cannot say that it, I always wanted it, but I must say it was not straight, you know? And um, I met in my first job, my first boss, um, who is now one of my best friends as well. She was really the one, 
um, developing me um, and, and really taking me, and this was a big privilege, she was taking me to board member um, meetings when I was 23 with the owner of the company I worked for. And I just was there and present. And then I learned also to speak in these meetings because you will not believe, but I'm a rather shy person. So, um, so I learned that and I always had great partners, um, mentors, and now I would even say, I don't know whether he would agree, but my current boss is also a mentor. He believed in me, he gave me the responsibility and, and I'm working with him very closely and I enjoy working in this position. So I think it's really, there's also a bit of luck in there, I must say. And there, so saying about luck, how would you like, how would you describe your leadership style? Oh my God, you need to, you need to ask my team. Um, <laughs> I wish uh, <laughs> they have opportunity, they are watching us, they have opportunity to add the I'm, I'm, I'm for sure, I'm for sure challenging in terms of performance. Um, I'm, I'm driven and uh, this is what my team also sees, of course, you know. Um, on the other hand, I think I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm empathetic. Um, I let, I, I, I listen to the opinions. Um, I want to further develop together. I'm a team player. Um, I really um, would not let them go into any meetings without being successful. So I really want them to be successful as well. Um, uh, and I, I really take care for them. Um, and what I try and what is not always easy because it's sometimes a bit stressful is especially before Christmas, I try to be kind. I think kindness is the most underestimated thing in leadership. Um, and um, I think it's, it's important to be kind um, and to try to, to create an atmosphere where people simply want to want to work and have fun and create ideas. Yeah, being said, so actually it's leadership style. You are very supporting uh, and supportive those who is following you as a leader. And in the meantime, maybe you have your personal advice as a leader to young generation who are developing the leadership abilities. So what you expecting from them and what they can do maybe better or to focus on. Well, if you're a young person who wants to do a career, I think um, there's first of all what I can give it as a tip. I think you need to decide whether you want to have a career. And I'm not saying that it's right or wrong to have a career. You can also say, no, I want to have a good job and this is totally fine for me. But if you say, yeah, I want to have an, an influential role in a, in a company, um, decide for yourself. Okay, this is the first thing. The second thing is um, make yourself or, or see that you, you get seen, you know? Um, this is especially difficult during these times where everyone is in home office and you know this momentum that during Zoom meetings, of course, people speak up, that always speak up. So, so, so really encourage yourself to speak up encourage yourself, send messages to, to your boss, um, also have meetings, um, try to create a platform for you where you are seen. Um, I think that's very important. And I can only, I, I can maybe give an example of one of our former interns who now joined the company, but in a different, um, in a different team. And it's very interesting. I mean, he as an intern once asked me, whether he can have half an hour with me just to ask question. And I think it was super brave because my calendar is super full. But then for me, it's also very inspiring to speak with a young leader or future young leader who wants to become a leader. And he now books on a regular basis, this half an hour, which is always an hour. And we do it from six to seven in the evening. And he asks me all the questions that you are now asking me. And he really asks me that in a very, and it's really nice. And, and I try to give him my advices and he can take it or not, you know? But I think you need to be a bit brave and, and, and try to, be, to do things like that. And you need to say where you wanna be. 
On the other hand, don't be too impatient because we have many people, um, many people that are thinking, oh, I'm, I'm just here, I'm entering this company and then I wanna be promoted. Promotion will come, promotion will come. I can promise you, you need to say that you wanna be promoted, but as I said, there's hard work behind. Yeah, I do agree. Promotion cannot happen without any hard work. So yeah, this is definitely true. Sounds a bit old fashioned, but, but that's what it is. <laughs> I think it sounds basic. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you work, but you need to work hard to be promoted. That's definitely. So and I think we have two questions, right? Should yeah, we but we, we keep, I promise you, we keep time uh, to answer. Okay, super. I see that it's pop up questions. Uh, I have another maybe one or two last question before we uh, keep time for uh, our audience. Again, about you. In this challenging time and in general, how you are staying motivated and on track? What so, is your, how do you stay motivated and on track? What is your, again, the key elements or key tips to be motivated? On track, you mean professionally or on track in the mindset or? Um, let's say motivated in general. So if you're in good shape and motivated, I think you can do everything. Yeah, that's true. So um, unfortunately, there's one thing which, is, which, which really balances me is I, I need people. Um, so that's why I'm also going to the office still. Um, I need, I'm a person who needs people. Um, I also need breaks, but I, I need people. I also need my friends. Um, I, I love my friends and I have very good friends. And, and of course my family, so they keep me in balance. That's one thing. The other thing is sports. Um, unfortunately, I, I'm not so always in sports, but I, I have this amazing app called The Class, which I can only recommend. It's an American app about a certain way of workout and you should try it because it's so cool. It's music, but it's also about your mindset. And it's really, it's also really workout. So this really helps me as well, next to a bit of yoga. Um, and then also I'm a person who really wakes up early in the morning, especially on the weekends. Um, and uh, between five to six, I'm already waking up and I and then I need time for myself. So the first two hours of the morning, I do for myself, I check my emails, I check my Instagram, I, I read my newspapers, I have my tea, candles are lit. So this is really something where I get into, where I can relax and, and then I'm getting energy again. So it's really a mix of social, but then also I need time for myself. Thank you, thank you, Isabel. So um, I think it was really very frank and insightful uh, conversation. I really would like now open the floor was a question from our, our audience, if you don't mind. So as a first question, hi, Anna and Isabel. Thank you for a great initiative and session. My Therese is a brand with such strong history. How does a brand continue to remain relevant and evolve, especially in a space as traditional as retail? Thank you. So the question is about our store or about? I think question is more about uh, as a brand, is a very historical brand. So how it's remained continue relevant in the world, especially in the versus traditional, e-commerce versus, versus traditional. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what, what keeps us being relevant is our products. So, I mean, we are relying on the most beautiful products and collections in the world. And then we are marketing these products and, and we make something out of it. So this is really something that, that keep, keeps us innovating, that keeps us um, thinking, that keeps us inspiring to being relevant as a pl platform and as a brand. Yeah. And again, so another question about brand. How can brands differentiate themselves and stand out in today's environment? There is so much noise from so many brands and the space can be very competitive. Oh, that's such a good question. Um, that's, our daily, that's our daily question we ask ourselves. I think the main point is being true to yourself um, and don't imitate. 
it's really about being true to yourself, find your way of communicating, also believing in it. And then on the other hand, testing, testing, testing. Um, new things that, that you would believe, just as an example, um, we did, um, of course, we, we, as you saw in the entry film, we are famous for our physical events. They play an ingredient, uh, they are incre incremental for, for our brand as a trust element, but also as an experience for our clients. And then we created all of a sudden virtual events and we would have never done that before. And I think they, yeah, we will do them also in the future. So I think we, you need to be always on the go and always drive yourself, especially where can you speak to my clients and what is relevant to my clients. Thank you. We have another question. So today is a lot of questions, Isabel. That's good. Something, yeah, exactly. So people are really interesting. I mean, something we look for short term results instead of long term achievement, but our boss is looking mostly in short term. What do you think? Oh, this is this is a, this is a difficult one. I don't know which brand you are working for, a company you work for. This might be also driven by the com company format you have. I think, I mean, we are a retailer and we look every day at our turnover. So, so there is, I think, there's always a mix mix of short term, mid term, and long term. Um, and long term is my, maybe not so easy, given how the world is. So, I think it's it's. Um, it's a mix of having a vision, but also making it on the daily life happen. So uh, maybe you you ask your boss for, for more de detailed information and why he thinks that way and, and can there be a middle ground or something like that. I think looking for a conversation about that would be the right thing to do if, if this is something that you're, you're not so happy with. Thank you. Thank you very much. And another question is coming. Many brands have had to make pandemic pilots. Any major pilots from my Teresa since the pandemic hit? Pilots? Pilots, see. What do you mean by that? Uh, I don't know. It seems like... So who is asking this question? We please ask you a little bit more details. Sorry, I don't, I don't know, really yeah. know what you mean. <laughs> I'm just reading question. Yeah, yeah, I see it here. <laughs> yes, please write us a little bit more details and we will be pleased to answer. We're moving to another question from Diana. How young girl can start her career? Which school? Start from big companies or small? Difficult question. I think it's um, how young, it, it really depends. I mean, if, if I can speak for my Teresa, basically we have... We have a lot of very young people starting with us. They come with us with a master degree mostly. Then they are around about 24. Um, so start really early. Um, in between bachelor and master, they mostly do a um, internship. Um, and also they do internships with us. And also we develop people from internships into, into roles. Um, that's quite a successful development for us um, so that I think it's an absolutely win-win situation. So I think the age is, is, is relevant in terms of schools. I mean, um, I think what I see with all, which is very different to when I started, all our team members are very flexible. It's amazing. They really go for the job they have, they have a passion for at least when they, when they join with us. Um, and so they are coming from the whole world to work with us. Um, out. Um, so I think it's it's really finding the right starting big or small. It's rather um, start with something that has um, content and where you can do something. Um, this is something important. The pros for starting big is that you have a name on your CV, which always helps. Uh, the pros with starting something smaller is that you have a much wider variety in your to-dos. Um, so it's really about your personality, whether you are um, more, more like a startup person where you can do basically everything or a person who um, wants to go with one of the big conglomerates and really learn it 
um, learn how to build brands, for example, which is amazing if you join one of the big conglomerates. So it's really about who you are, that's, that's big or small. And then also, if you look for a job, you also need to know yourself. Are you a builder? Meaning you start with something and you create something? Or are you more like already successful and doing a bit more, but not really build something? no right or wrong um but i think it's it's really about knowing yourself and back again to the our previous question thank you isabel and back to previous question about pandemic pilot uh we we got actually comment on the pandemic pilot i mean any big or significant changes that my Teresa has had to implement in order to cope with the changes brought on by covid19 Sure, any big okay, now I understand it. Okay, yeah. so, so I mean, first of all, from a team perspective, of course, um, we were remote from one day to the other. It's a big change uh, to a company um, like us, um, but the team's managed incredibly well. That's one thing. And the other change is for sure, uh, we had to produce, I mean, my teams are producing also a lot of photo shoots and events, as I was saying before, and also press um, is all about personal relationships. My, we do digital lunches, uh, we do remote productions, meaning we are on the screen while in the photo studio everything is done, which is tough to do. We're doing digital events. So, so I mean, we, we, we get got more and to, to still keep on going what we have to do. Thank you, thank you. We have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> This is something incredible, I will tell you. We have another question. I guess it's from very young generation. Um, I'm not sure that if any right question, but we will try. Working with my Teresa, I have more job opportunities than working on a single brand. This question. Can you repeat it again? Yes. Working with my Teresa, I have more job opportunities than working on single brand. It's about job opportunities, if it can be more. I mean, it, yeah, I think, I mean, we are multi-brand retailer. You can also, to work for a brand is very different. I work for brands, both is fine and both is, gives opportunities in the same way, I would say. Yeah, I, I think I totally agree, totally agree. It's not about um, brand, it's about just work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another one, we are all part of a big corporations uh, that most of the time are not people oriented. Do you think that this attitude is changing? I, I, I'm not sure whether I would agree. I see a lot of brands or companies who, have, who are people oriented. The question is, what do you, how do you define people oriented? And as I said before, I mean, if I look at my teams and how our team, our people who are heading the departments are treating their people, it's very people oriented um, in that sense that we try to nurture, that we try to listen. But in the end, of course, there's always a business behind. And, and I think this is important to understand. So. That would be my answer. Yeah, I, I again totally agree with you. Next question. How your company is selling in different countries with different culture? You have teams focusing on each country. I can I cannot say too much about that, but we are we are we're shipping in over 130 countries. Uh, we have offices in uh, Munich and Berlin and Barcelona and London in New York. Um, so um, every, everything we do is global. Um, there are certain countries that have dedicated teams, but there's not a lot of them. Uh, the rest is done by, by global teams, really. OK, OK. And there, you mentioned about the service back in, in case if somebody would like to exchange or something, you also provide it, is correct, from all these countries? Yeah. Okay, uh, short question. Tell us about your idea of fashion. 
my idea of fashion. Okay, my personal. Um, well, I'm I'm I love fashion. Um, I, it's also changing when you get a bit older, to be honest. Um, no, I like I love to mix brands with high street. Um, I think it's all about finding your personal style. I have a certain personal style. One is that I wear a lot of, a lot of black um, in the business, which is just making it easier to travel, to be honest. Um, but I think it's also yeah, having your personal style. As I can as you can see, I have a red lipstick. I always have red red lipstick in the business, um, or mostly. Um, so I think it's all about your personal style. I think one thing is always that you prepare your outfit for the office the day before. I always do that. You pack, um, I, I pack very in outfits. Um, so, and I, I can only tell you if, if, if it's not possible to buy luxury goods, super important is the shoe um, and, and buy good shoes. Um, you only need a couple, um, that's really important. No, it's here. I, I would maybe add from my side, a couple shoes is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have, I have a lot of shoes, shoes but, but you enough. can start with a couple. <laughs> <laughs> like black dresses. It's by circumstances, both of us with black dresses today. But it's also never enough. So we want to have one dress and another dress with a long, short sleeve. And um, yeah. Do you feel any differences between generation and uh, modern and fashion trends? Do they buy different clothes or they have a different style? Oh, I cannot, I cannot. I think everyone is so individual. Um, if, I, if, if I look at our people, we have really fashion lovers who are also buying vintage and mixing it with high street brands and then really saving for, for a sale item they would love to have. And, and then we have others who are very, very clean. And so it's, it's very individual. No, it's, I think it's not about age. Okay. It's about just time. Yeah. Yeah. Another question which is coming to us. <clears throat> Fashion scenes consolidating in uh, big conglomerates, Kering, Richmond, El Eldamash. Is it good or bad from your point of view? Um, that's a difficult question to answer even. I, I would not, I mean, that's for me too judgmental. I would not answer that question in that time. Yeah. Again, I do agree with you. I think we today we had an incredible lot of questions and just bump you. <laughs> All good. So no worries. We we I would like to stop any question for now because it's time already, and I think we need to go towards conclusion. I would like to remind people that are always watching us that today we have uh, Isabel May. As a special guest, I'm really very thank you so much and I'm very honored for your time. And uh, to be honest, thank you for being honest and for this is very open conversation to this session on generation change. Also, thank you very much for a lot of advices um, to young generation, to leaders, to partners, to pillars. And um, as I mentioned before, it's uh, really nice just to write it down and maybe to follow follow and uh, to achieve your dream and um, maybe dream work or dream team uh, as well. Uh, from my point of view, you are an absolute inspiration and role model. And thank you again for your sharing and insight. Thank you very much, Isabel. Thanks so much, Anna, for having me. And thanks also for putting your energy in, in this um, new format. Um, I'm very honored to be part and um, I'm very happy if anything that I said help any of the young and older women to, to think about. I'm very happy that that could happen. Yeah, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much. I'm wishing you a great uh, Friday and great weekend. Thank you. Yeah. Happy holiday season to everyone. Yes, it's true. Happy seasonal holidays. Thank you. Bye-bye.